it's that time of the afternoon where we give you an update on what's happening in the tropics. We do have a couple of tropical waves that I need to tell you about, and they are in the Atlantic Ocean, and they could potentially head our way. But for now, we are going to be dealing with that big heat dome still influencing our weather across Southeast Texas for the most part, but we do have some waves that we will need to monitor. The good news is that they are expected to develop very slowly, so we likely have several days to watch these systems. Let's start off with tropical wave number one. This one is over into the eastern Caribbean Sea now, and it is producing some showers and storms. Some of those storms making their way up into portions of Puerto Rico. You can see San Juan, Puerto Rico there. We've got the Lesser Antilles over here, and this is the system. It's kind of disorganized, but it is producing broadly scattered showers and storms across portions of the Eastern Caribbean. And there's just a very low shot for development over the next two days, just a 10% chance. And over the next seven days, just a very low 10% shot that this will develop. General movement is off to the west. So if it does develop, it would try to push into the Central Caribbean and get a little bit closer to us. But for now, development, if it even happens, is extremely slim as far as that shot for development. We are not expecting much with that system. As we head into the Western Atlantic, you'll see we have another tropical wave and this one is a little bit closer to the US. There's a chance this one could push close to the east coast of Florida, maybe up towards the Carolina coast over the next week or so. A 0% chance for development for the next two days, but a 10% shot for development over the next seven days. This is generally tracking off to the west northwest. You can see Miami there, Jacksonville there, and notice they're kind of in that area where this could potentially head. So this is basically just a fairly weak tropical wave right now, producing some disorganized showers and storms a couple hundred miles south of Bermuda. But as it tracks off to the west northwest, there's a shot that it could develop into a tropical cyclone, but only a 10% chance over the next week. Now let's fly all the way out to the eastern Atlantic and this is the newest tropical wave that has come off the coast of Africa, and it does have a shot for development. But just as I told you with the other two tropical waves, that chance for development likely will happen over a longer period of time, likely over the next seven days. And even then, that shot for development very low at 20%. So there you can see it just off of the west coast of Africa. It likely will slowly but surely push off to the west northwest and could get into the central or western portions of the Atlantic over the next week to week and a half. But at this point, the chance for development very low. The upper levels of the atmosphere are not very favorable for development. And we still have quite a bit of that Saharan dust ushering in some drier air in the atmosphere. So those things are kind of working against these systems getting stronger. The majority of the Caribbean pretty quiet. Of course, we have that first tropical wave that I showed you affecting portions of Puerto Rico and the Lesser Antilles off in the eastern Caribbean, but the rest of the Caribbean pretty quiet. Gulf of Mexico fairly quiet. Nothing being monitored by the National Hurricane Center that would potentially be strengthening into a tropical depression, tropical storm or hurricane at this point. Let's move over to the eastern Pacific, and we do have a few clusters of showers and storms near Central America and also up around Acapulco, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico City, but nothing that is being monitored for additional tropical cyclone development. So we do have very warm sea surface temp still out there, buoy temp here near Miami, close to 90 degrees. So definitely a lot of warm water out there that would act as fuel for these potential tropical cyclones if they were to get going. Also very warm waters in the Caribbean Sea, but we've still got that Saharan dust. So that's kind of acting to hinder development, even though we do have the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico and also of the Caribbean. Waters are very warm still as well across much of the Atlantic. Of course, in the northern portion of the Atlantic, you do get much cooler waters, but central southern portions of the Atlantic, we've got those temps mainly in the 80s. So certainly waters warm enough to help those systems to grow strong and develop quickly. But this is what's hindering a lot of that development, this Saharan dust that just keeps moving off of the west coast of Africa. It's traveling all the way across the Atlantic. And a lot of that dust is also pushed into portions of the Caribbean and especially the Gulf of Mexico. You can see even Houston getting in on some of that dusty air as that southerly flow, that onshore flow continues to push that dust our way. 
Fortunately, we're not expecting a ton of dust, but it could still impact our air quality. But as far as our tropical development, it is going to keep that to a minimum because it's bringing in some dry air and we still have that heat dome in place that would help to steer away any tropical action. So I don't expect anything hitting us anytime soon. We've already had four named systems for the Atlantic tropical season so far, the hurricane season. Arlene, Brett, Cindy, and Don. If we do get one of those three waves to develop over the next couple of days or next seven days, the next name on the list would be Emily. And then if they all develop, we'd have Emily, Frank, and Gert. Of course, these are the remainder of the names that will be put to use if necessary if we do get further development. As far as our hurricane season, of course, we are nearing the end of month two. Of course, hurricane season began on June 1st. It goes all the way through November 30th and we're close to the end of the second month, but we're now we're about to get into the peak or what is typically more of the peak of hurricane season. That would be the months of August and September where that main peak would be around September 10th. So even though things are still quiet for us here, don't let your guard down. Make sure that you download our Fox 26 weather app for tropical weather, forecast cones, our follow me feature, hurricane watches, warnings, and a plethora of ton of other alerts. Of course, you've got radar on there so you can keep track of any heavy rain locally that we have and also anything else going on, any other types of alerts that we may get. Of course, with our air quality and that dust moving in, we could get an air quality alert. You can find that on our Fox 26 weather app as well. So fortunately for Houston, for Southeast Texas, no tropical storms or hurricanes headed our way anytime soon. In fact, much of the U.S. looks pretty safe right now. The only issue for the U.S. would be maybe the eastern coast of Florida and over towards the Carolinas with that one tropical wave over the next week if it gets into that area and if it even holds together. The chance for that developing very, very slim. But of course, we're watching it and you'll get your daily updates usually around 4 to 4.30 p.m. every afternoon as long as we are in hurricane season. And of course, that is all the way through the end of November. So check us out. Make sure to review your hurricane plan your emergency kit make sure you have everything that you need in that go over evacuation routes insurance the best time to do that is when things are quiet like right now i'm fox 26 meteorologist ramisha shade enjoy the rest of your day